G'day folks, it's Rob here. Today's video we'll be looking at some frequently asked questions to do with filters in aquaponics. So today's video is a compilation of Q&A responses to questions left below videos here on YouTube. Feel free to leave those questions down there folks and I will get back to them as soon as I can find some spare time. First question to kick us off we'll be looking at uh, position of the filter in the system and why we have it before the grow beds. So first off the bat we'll have a look at YS6425's question. Uh, are the solids not good for the plants? Why not place the filter after feeding the plants? Well, basically what we're trying to do is keep as many solids out of the media bed as possible. Uh, the main reason being is um, if there's enough solids left to build up in that media bed, it can cause all sorts of hassles like anaerobic zones, anoxic zones. That's why I pretty much will recommend to remove as much solids as possible from your media-based grow bed system as you can. Uh, now there's a couple of people out there, um, some gurus even, who think that if you're taking solids out of the media beds, it means there's going to be no nutrients for the plants. That is not the case at all. So for you folks who want verification of this, I'll leave a link to a paper down in the description by Thomas Peterhans. It's an aquaponic nutrient model thesis that he's um, published. On page eight, figure three, there is a table. Well, what this table shows is the breakdown of nutrients and how they're found in the system. There's a category for suspended in water, also fish solids, which is what we're talking about here, and also the amount of nutrients that are locked up by the fish as they assimilate it for their own growth. But the long and the short of it is if you have enough fish in the system, there is more than enough nutrients that will make it through to the grow bed side of things and taking out the solids uh, just solves having headaches further on down the line when it comes to your fish and plant health. Following on from that, I have had folks ask me if there's ways to reclaim the nutrients from those solids so they don't go to waste. And yeah, in the past, I used to run them out under fruit trees and on the veggie patch, um, you know, you might as well feed up the soil beds with them. And some people will actually put it in their worm farms as well. Now, what I've been doing with the solids from the radial flow settler is processing them in an offline mineralization tank. So I um, yeah, had a few questions about it and shot this for a video a couple of weeks ago. Now, what we have here is basically a drum and it is full of bubbling fish waste. It's all the solids that are taken out from the radial flow settler. Uh, just that blue filter drum or settler drum over there. They are pumped into this and you can see it's bubbling away nicely. There is actually a series of air stones down the bottom and they've been altered slightly because they had some air issues. They were basically clogging up and not providing much oxygenation whatsoever. So I pulled one of the stones off and she looks to be bubbling very well now. Now the reason it is bubbling is because we need to provide the bacteria in there with oxygen and also a carbon source, which I'll cover in a minute, so they can break down the organic matter to make the elements available for the plants to take up. And now the way it works is two to three hours before I clean out the radial flow settlement, I turn the air pump off, all the solids or the bulk of them settle out towards the bottom, and then I can decant off just under half the barrel worth of nutrient rich water pop that back into the aquaponic grow bed so the plants can make use of those elements. And to fill it back up, all we do is hook a hose on the pump connected to the radial flow settler, and that brings the solids rich water over here to the mineralization drum. Chuck in a small amount of carbon rich uh, feed for the bacteria, and that helps provide energy to the bacteria so they can convert the solids. And then it just bubbles away again until the next time I need to clean the radial flow settler and we repeat the process. So it is a pretty basic little system. Um, you can um, check out Rob's over on Bigelow Brook Farm. He's got one that's actually in line with his system. So yeah, just a little bit of an explanation. I've just had a, a number of comments in underneath videos. So I thought, uh, yeah, I'd answer them in this one to help you folks out. Now, for you folks out there who do like to ask questions in the comment section of the aquaponics videos, I do try to get back to them when I have some spare time. Unfortunately though, things are just getting busier here. Uh, for you folks who have purchased our Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide though, all you need to do is hit that little advice button down there and shoot me through a message. It can include uh, photos as well as videos over on that platform and I can get back to you ASAP. I generally check uh, the guide notifications three times a day. So the chances are I'll see them within, you know, three to six hours of you posting the question and get back to you straight away. For you folks who also support us through the, our Patreon website, Farm Your Own Yard, 
and the YouTube membership program. If you leave questions under anything there, wherever you subscribe, I do like to get to back to you folks as soon as possible as well. With the general YouTube comments, I get so many, it does take me a while to get through them all. Um, so if you are supporting us in other ways, uh, I might pay for you to ask those questions there. Just briefly on the guide, folks, it is only $19.95 US. It's got hours upon hours worth of helpful tutorials on there. Downloads are being added. The Chop and Flip one's on there. Bell Siphon one should be on very soon. And yes, you can also gift it. If you pop on over to the website, you can send it to a gift. If you have people who you think it may help out after you've had a bit of a gander at it yourself and think it's helpful. And yes, there will be links down in the description and one would have already popped up here if I've done my job correctly. Uh, back to the uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, Troy, Rob, do you think we really need a biofilter if we're using media grow beds as the filter itself to colonize the good bacteria? Basically what um, Troy is talking about is this moving bed bioreactor I have here. Um, I personally think it is a good idea to have one in the system if you are running your water from the fish tank through a solid um, settling device then a biofilter, then in the sump tank with some of that water going directly back to the fish tank. I know some people say you can get away with it. Hundreds if not thousands of people, actually it would be thousands of people, already do get away with not having anything like this in the system. But I do like to have it there. Um, there's two reasons why. Firstly, I did notice that I was getting ammonia and nitrite going back into the fish tank um, at the start of it, um, once it first started out. Basically, not enough biological surface area in the sump tank down there to process the ammonia all the way through, so some was going back into the fish tank. If you're just new to aquaponics, there's a load of clips in this play playlist with a um, one on cycling the system in there, so just suss that out if you're a bit confused about what I'm talking about. Um, so, but basically, we don't want nitrite and ammonia going back into the fish tank. Um, there are ways you can safeguard your fish, but too much to go into here. So that's why I prefer to have it in the system here, even though I've got more than enough media to process the ammonia from the fish. Uh, the second reason I like to have it there is because if anything goes pear-shaped with the system, or maybe when it comes time for us to move the grow beds down the back, I can leave the fish up here and just have the water running through um, the filtration, through the biofilter, into the sump, and then have water going directly back into the fish tank and run it as an aquaculture system because I have more than enough biological surface area in here to look after processing any of the ammonia waste that the fish can produce. It's something I like to keep in my systems and I'd recommend people who are really dedicated and want to set up a decent system for a number of years that they also look into doing something like this. It really is just one of those little extra safeguards that I like to recommend. But in saying that also too, if I had the system set up differently, if I had the water going from the radial flow settler directly into the grow beds themselves and then from the grow beds back to the sump tank and then back to the fish tank in one single loop, I wouldn't need this whatsoever. But like I said, I do like that added safety of being able to separate the plant from the fish side and it'll definitely come in handy when I move the system. Thought I'd let you know that I will be doing a video very soon on biofiltration, on biofilters in aquaponic system. Looking at these guys here, uh, which are quite popular, um, just using a material that is used in the wastewater treatment industry. Even things as basic as your grow beds themselves, all of them offer biofiltration to the system. And if you are interested in seeing that video on different forms of biofiltration and you haven't subscribed, all you need to do is click that little subscribe button down there, jump on over to the bell icon and fingers crossed, YouTube will send you a notification when I upload it and you can come along and suss it out. Now Juan from Spain has asked, um, does both the solids filter and the moving bed biofilter need to be below the water level of the fish tank? Thanks. Thank you, Juan. Um, in my setups, I like to have the um, outlet at the top of the radial flow filter at least 10 centimeters or four inches below the top of the water level in the fish tank. Uh, that just provides a little bit of um, head to send the water through to the filter and you've pretty much all got no real concerns about it backing up at all. As for the pipe work between the solids filter and the uh, moving bed bioreactor, I just like to have a large enough diameter pipe so there won't be any issue with a backup of water forcing the radial flow filter to overflow. Now, as long as you keep your pipe size nice and large and your, your initial fall to the settler below the water level in the fish tank, you should be laughing. I've had a couple from, uh, one from Amanda and one from BRT. Uh, in regards to adding another filter body, basically duplicating that filter and putting it either in front of or behind that filter 
to collect more solids. If you have a filter, then another filter, plumbed through and then out to the sump tank or bio like we have or whatever, what you're basically doing is having the same flow rate just through two separate filters. Some people would think that that would extend the retention time, but it basically doesn't. You're still getting the same 1500 litres an hour um, through a 200 litre container, and then another 1500 litres through another 200 litre container, and that gives you, you know, the same retention time in both. What I would suggest you do is rather than set them up in series, like in one big chain, I would have an outlet coming out of here and splitting into two separate radial flow settlers and this little diagram will probably explain it better. So basically what we would be doing is taking the one flow out and splitting it into two and that would give us 750 litres an hour through each 200 litre drum and that would give us a retention time of around about 16 minutes which is basically doubling the retention time we would have if it was 1500 litres an hour coming through a 200 litre vessel. So if you are thinking of adding an extra um, radial flow settler because you can't find a large enough drum to extend your retention time, definitely helps if you can split the flow at the fish tank there and then plumb them separately. And as the plumbing leaves the two separate filters, you could either join them up so they could continue their way into a moving bed bioreactor if you have something like ours, or into the sump tank or other filtration, or you could um, leave them separate to flow into your sump tank or maybe send them out to different beds depending on which way you've got them set up. There you go folks, I hope that helps you. Um, definitely try and split the flow to increase your retention time. Increased retention time means a lot more solids falling out in the bottom of your settlers. And while we're on radial flow filters, Michelle has asked about the delivery of water into the radial flow settler itself. Um, as I mentioned before, there is a link down in the description if you're not familiar how these things work, and another one on as to how you can build your own. Um, but the water basically comes in down through the bottom here, is delivered through a standpipe inside a stilling well, where the water changes direction in a larger diameter pipe down towards the base of the radial flow settler. That basically slows the flow of the water once at the top and again as the water enters into the larger volume vessel below. Now Michelle was asking um, why can't you just pop it in through the top. Uh, the main reason that I can see is it would increase velocity down through that stilling well creating a lot of turbulence down around the base which would kick up the solids on the bottom depending on how you have it set up inside of course but there generally would be more turbulence down there making it harder for the solids to settle out. Now that's not to say you can't do this. Uh, good mate Rob from Bigelow Brook Farm, he's made up a funky little dispersal plate in the top of his radial flow settler. And so he can plumb the water in through the top, it hits that plate, it slows down the velocity and then basically carries on down through the um, stilling well, exactly the same as this, so he can draw the solids off from the base of his comb bottom tank. It can be done, um, I just wouldn't pour it in straight from the top. Uh, because it will cause the, um, the solids down the bottom uh, not to settle out as easily as if the water was slowed down a lot. Now on to another question about the radial flow settlers. Uh, this one comes from Ailey Farm Estates. Uh, how would you go about setting up a radial flow settler if my fish tank is low, like only two foot or about 600 mil high? Uh, moving it or lifting the fish tank isn't an option. Same with the radial flow filter, digging a hole isn't an option. What do I have to do? Now this layout sounds like it could be a pond or maybe a, a basic aquaponic system like the IBC chop and flip design. In systems like this, sometimes it's better just to run a pump in the fish tank itself, let it pick up those solids along with the water, deposit that into some sort of filtration device or settler, and then have it flow on down to your hydroponic grow beds. Now, in the past I've used a canister filter. I actually have a clip on that. Um, you can check it out just up there. It's basically a container with a lot of media in it that the um, solids will collect in. And then once a week or every second week, depending on how many fish you have in the system, um, you just pull out the media and just give it a bit of a hose. Now you could go with a radial flow settler like that one there, but the body of the unit would have to be fairly large. The reason being is when the solids are picked up by that pump in the fish tank, they're gonna be macerated and turned into very small fine particulate. And finer particulate needs a longer retention time in your radial flow settler 
for it to fall out of suspension. So I would suggest a larger volume filter in this case, or maybe consider something like a canister filter. So I do hope those Q and A's did help a few of you budding aquaponicists out who are interested in filtration in aquaponic systems. There will be more coming to the channel. I've got one lined up on fish and also on another on nutrient and pH as well. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and jump on over to the bell icon and YouTube hopefully will send you notifications when they're uploaded. And as always, I really do need to thank you all who come along every week and thumb up the videos and have a bit of a chat with me down in the comments section. I really do appreciate the support, folks. Be even better if you could share them around with your family and friends if you think that they might help them um, over on social media network groups and pages and that sort of thing. I really would appreciate it. Special thanks needs to go to you folks who are supporting us through the YouTube membership program and also our patron website, Farm Your Own Yard. Huge special thanks to you guys. We really do appreciate it. But I will pretty much all wrap it up there. I do hope you're all well and happy and your gardens and aquaponics are booming. And I'll catch you next video. Cheers, folks, and happy growing.